You're watching Digit, I am Florence George and Intel sent us a huge and heavy crate. It says Intel NUC, sent by Intel. Let's open it up. What are you Heavy to bhaate, bhai. So this tiny machine is the most powerful PC that I've ever seen in this form factor. I just want to tell you that I have opened it before, I have tested it before before. So I know how does this thing perform. But still, if I give you extra information, so these Intel NUCs are these bare bone systems by Intel, which are in different form factors. Like if we talk about Intel NUCs about different variants, then there are 4x4, which are these very small and tiny PCs. And then there is this enthusiast rate PC, which is slightly bigger in size from the normal 4x4. there is this enthusiast rate ka PC, which is slightly bigger in size from the normal 4x4 but of course smaller than this monstrosity over here and then we have got this one which is called as the NUC 13 Extreme. Let's quickly have a look at the information and specifications of this machine. Basically this 13.9 liter ki jo chassis hai, this holds the most powerful performance out there because this thing has got the Intel Core i9 of the 13th generation, the 13900K, 24 cores, 32 threads and monstrosity all the way and this can also hold up to 64 gigs of LPDDR5 type key RAM. Then this thing has also got a full size RTX 30 freaking 80 Ti. I cannot believe this thing that it has itta sara kuch, you know, installed hai already. But coming to the other specifications, so this thing is currently having a terabyte of uh, Renegade, that is the Kingston Renegade Gen 4 solid state drive and also has got a 750 watt ka SFX power supply unit. Over in this side, we have got one, two, three, so basically if in case you want to install a fat GPU in this one, up to 12 inches, basically you can even install a theme slot key thickness wala GPU in this machine, so that is also possible in here. Apart from that, this thing has also got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth as well. So those were all the specifications. The monstrosity in here surely is crazy. Let's now have a look at what do we get inside the chassis because 13.9 liter ke andar itna sara hardware dal dena is gonna be one task. So let's quickly open it up and let's see. You can basically pop it open with just thumb screws. That is possible in here. They have given the entirety of the chassis uh, overall mesh design because यहाँ पे जो air flow होगा वो काफी आसानी से हो जाता है so this is the right panel and this is the left panel and as I can see it over here that यहाँ पे we have got two 120 millimeter के fans this is the fan of the power supply unit on this side let's quickly have a look तो यहाँ पे आपके पास में मिल जाता है एक entire CPU का unit so here is your main unit, hai. as you can see it over here. This is the main cooler of the Intel Core i9 and as you can see, here is easily accessible RAM. Bhi bhi hui hai. Let me quickly see that the RAM has two slots, four slots and I can see it that we have got two slots. So if in case you want to make it go 64 gigs, you will have to replace these RAM sticks. So currently here is 32, hai, but you can surely install 64 tak ki RAM sticks here install kar sakte hai aap. Moving on to the next thing and here we have got the area of the GPU and as you can see it over here ki yahaan pe unhone ek ASUS TUF ka 3080 Ti install kiya hua hai. Yani ke with ease you'll be facing no issues and you can easily install a third party uh, GPU in here. So let's quickly pack it up and let's see how does this thing performs on some benchmarks and some games. Now that we are in the system, let's quickly run a benchmark. That is the Cinebench R23 because I really want to know ke i9 in the 13.9 liter ki chassis, how will this thing perform? So let's quickly uh, run this benchmark. And the results of Cinebench R23. So our score is 35,855 points ka score on Cinebench R23. So here we are playing Forza Horizon 5 with the resolution of 4K. So here we are running the game at 4K at the most extreme graphical preset. And still we can see that we are getting a frame rate of well above 100 FPS. So if in case you want to play this game at the most extreme graphical preset at the 4K resolution, yes my friend, it is actually possible. And that too at the frame rate of above 100 FPS as you can see it over here. Also, one more thing that here we have no dips to see here. The gameplay is extremely smooth. All facts, no cap. 
And now we are at the next game. This is RDR2. We are running the RDR2 at the resolution of again 4K. But currently we are running at Digital Foundry's console-like settings and at the resolution of 4K. And as you can see it over here, that we are still getting very playable. And again, around 93 FPS our current frame rate. That's again very good. No doubt about that. RDR2 is also in a nutshell. 4K gaming is surely possible on this machine. Now let's talk about the about the thermals and of course about the power consumption. So as you can see it over here that we are consuming around 345-344 watts from the GPU and then we are consuming around 90 watts of power from the CPU. So i9 is consuming 90 watt and the 3080Ti is consuming around 350 watt tops. So here we have talked about power consumption. Ki. Let's quickly have a look at the uh, temperatures. So here the GPU is running at 61 degrees Celsius and the CPU is running as hot as 60 degrees Celsius. And it's not that we are not consuming the GPU, we are actually using the GPU at its maximum potential. As you can see it over here that we are using the GPU at up to 95% ka overall usage. The next game is gonna be God of War and here we are playing the game at the Quad HD resolution and at the extreme preset and we are able to get around 100 plus FPS. So here this game is again very playable. 350 watt, 100% GPU usage and uh, bro, it's crazy. <laughs> also around 150 watt on the CPU. The temperatures in here are around 80 degrees Celsius on the processor and around 61 degrees Celsius on the GPU. Yeah, so that was God of War, moving on. To the conclusion. So after playing these games, running benchmarks, editing 4K videos on Premiere Pro and spending the entire weekend with this small yet extremely powerful Intel NUC 13 Extreme, I have got my verdict. First of all, let's talk about the pricing. So the pricing of this bare bones kit of the NUC 13 Extreme will range in the ballpark of around 1300 US dollars. Now that sounds pricey at the first glance, but when you consider the build quality, the performance, the overall footprint and the upgradability options like the PCIe Gen 5 slot for the GPU and easy access to all the components, the price do happen to make some sense. So in a nutshell, whether it is gaming or using this NUC for professional video editing, if you are looking forward for a low hassle, low footprint wala a tiny device with absolute real performance under the hood, then yes, you can really consider this machine. At times, the combination of the hardware really makes you question ki ye itna small kaise hai. But you know, I'm not saying ki this is the smallest PC out there, but you will have to agree to the fact that this is genuinely one of the most powerful tiny PC with some seriously good thermal management. With that said, I surely would want to know about your thoughts on this machine. Kya isme Intel Arc GPU hona chahiye tha? Kya isme RGB honi chahiye thi? Kya isko aur chota hona chahiye tha? Let us know about your thoughts on the Intel NUC 13 Extreme. Drop a comment, get subscribed and we'll catch you all soon in the near future. Take care. Peace.